वंस अगेन वेलकम टू इन दिस सेशन सो इन दिस सेशन वील लर्न इनर्जी लेवल डायग्राम फॉर मॉलिकुलर ऑर्बिटर्स सो बिफोर गोइंग टू दिस लेक्चर्स यू शुड गो द प्रीवियस लेक्चर्स दैन इट विल बी कम्फर्टेबल फॉर अंडरस्टैंडिंग द नेक्स्ट टॉपिक द रिलेटिव इनर्जी ऑफ द मॉलिकुलर ऑर्बिटर्स इट इज डिपेंडिंग अपॉन द फॉलोइंग फैक्टर्स वन फैक्टर इज इनर्जी ऑफ द एटोमिक ऑर्बिटल इज इन्वॉल्व इन द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ मॉलिकुलर ऑर्बिटर्स एस सेकेंड इज द एक्सटेंट ऑफ ओवरलैपिंग विच इज अकरिंग बिटवीन द डिफरेंट ऑर्बिटर्स मीन्स इनर्जी ऑफ द एटोमिक ऑर्बिटर्स मीन्स फर्स्ट वन सो हाउ इट इज डिफरिंग सो सपोज uh if the energy is one is orbital this is some energy and this is a two s energy this is two p energy so this is again increasing this is increasing within the same pair of molecular orbitals bonding molecular orbital having the lower energy than the anti bonding molecular orbitals means it is one s and this is a, a sigma one star s so sigma one star anti bonding will be more in energy than that of the one s so this is the i can write this is the one s and this is the sigma star One s. So this is the anti bonding. This is the bonding. So this has a less energy. This has more energy. This is what I want to say that. Second, the extent of overlapping. So greater the overlapping, the energy of bond, uh, bonding orbital is lowered. While the energy of the anti bonding orbital is raised. So this depends. For example, suppose uh, we have two p atomic orbitals. It has six molecular orbitals between the two p. Has uh, atomic orbitals uh, have uh, six molecular orbitals between two atoms. So for bonding, you can say sigma two p z. So this will form by two uh, sig pi two p x pi two p y. Similarly, you can say this is uh, sigma star two p z sigma pi star two p x and pi star two p y. So these orbitals can be experimentally seen by the spectroscopic method. There is no other way. So if you take the energy wise, uh, pi two p x is almost equal to Pi two pi. So these are called the degenerate molecular orbitals. Similarly, anti bonding pi star two p x is almost equal to pi star two p y. So this is also degenerate. So both are degenerate. But uh, if you take sigma star two p z, it has the maximum energy among the six. So you can see one, two, three, four, five, six. Among the six, we have the maximum is pi two sigma star two p z. But there is a doubt in sigma two p z because its energy is not definite. Why? Why this is energy is not definite in this case? Because if you take a dieting molecule like lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, so energy of sigma two p z is greater than that of pi two p x or pi two p y. So in this uh, five cases, one, two, three, four, five cases, sigma two p z is greater than that of this one. Why? Because a sigma two s and two p z. So when there were sigma two p z and two s will uh, come together, is there? Mixing take place here. Mixing take place between the sigma two p z and sigma two uh, s. Sigma two p z and two s mixing take place. So which changes the sequence of energy in case of boron, carbon, nitrogen. That's why energy is higher. But if you take the case of uh, oxygen, fluorine, neon, in these three cases, sigma two p z is lesser than that of pi two p x and pi two p y. So energy uh, molecular orbital for the first ten dieting molecules are. It is described in a different way. Let us see that how it is different way. So we can see the energy diagram for the first ten molecular orbitals for this uh, diatomic homonuclear molecule molecules like lithium two nitrogen. You can see here sigma two s sigma star one s uh, sigma two s sigma star two s, and these two are degenerate. And again, this has lower energy because this is lithium beryllium boron carbon nitrogen. So this is lower than that of uh, this anti bonding of this one. You can see clearly here. So you can see here. So this is again lower. This is again higher. So this is higher, but this is lower. So this is higher. So the, after that, anti bonding pi two p z is there. You can see clearly. So energy of cpr is greater than that of two p y and two s. It is increasing energy. Similarly, if you take the uh, for the homo nuclear diatomic molecules in these cases, oxygen. Chlorine, nitrogen. So what happens? The energy diagram is like this one. So in this case, you can see carefully, sigma two p z is lesser than that of pi two p x and pi two p m. So only this is the major difference of this sigma two p x and sigma two p z. In this case, it is uh, when the 
uh, total electrons 14 it will be greater but in this case when the total electron is more than 14 so it becomes lesser energy of the sigma 2 pz becomes lesser of pi 2 px and pi 2 py now you can see this uh, another diagram molecular orbital energy diagram for lithium to neon molecules so this is sigma 2s and antibonding sigma 2s these are the two different molecular orbitals so we are starting from the sigma 2s and 1s is same so energy is increasing so again uh, sigma 2pz has a higher energy for the uh, when the electrons is uh, 14 so this has higher energy because this will not uh, mix up with the 2s so pi 2p have a lower energy than that of 2pz and the remaining things will be same so it means this is 2p this is 2p and it has again uh, pi star 2px and pi star and sigma 2pz is the highest energy so this is for the up to uh, neon molecules so let us see for the uh, another uh, molecules that is after neon so after neon is you can see here this is the after neon so oxygen fluorine and neon molecules you can see this is the molecular orbital diagram of these three molecules oxygen fluorine neon so you can see the sigma 2s sigma star 2s and again in, in uh, energy increasing so what it means sigma 2 page having a less energy so well we have seen it uh, when the electron is uh, less uh, 14 or less than 14 so sigma 2 page has highest energy than pi 2 px and pi 2 pa but in this case sigma 2 pj has a less energy in uh, in that case uh, when the electron is a le uh, less than uh, uh, 15 so a sigma 2 pj has a highest energy than pi 2 px and remaining uh, arrangement is same like of uh, sigma you can see pi star 2 px pi star so sigma 2 pj is highest one so remaining thing is the only there is a difference between this energy level you have to keep in mind this is very important while writing the configuration of the molecular orbital now we will see the rules for filling the electrons in molecular orbitals so number one so molecular orbitals are filled in increasing order of their energies so it is following the upper rule lowest energy of molecular orbitals will be filled first and second each molecular orbital can accommodate a maximum two electrons with their spins in opposite directions so they are following the poly exclusion principles if there are two molecular orbitals having the same energies the electrons will enter the first as singly and then both achieve one electron each pairing will start then pairing will start so this is nothing but the Hunt's rule electron equal to the sum of the electrons actually present in combining atoms electrons which is equal to the sum of the electrons actually present in the combined atoms are placed one at a time in a molecular orbital to obtain the electronic configuration of the molecules so you have to remember this rule also now we'll see how electronic configuration and molecular behavior so what is electronic configuration it's nothing but the distribution of electrons among various orbitals is called as electronic configuration so it is providing what information uh, for the molecular orbitals so first it will give the stability of molecule how um, molecule is stable in molecular or molecular orbital so a molecule is formed when the total energy of the system is decreases when the energy is decreased, then molecule is stable. So it is possible when the bonding electron is more than the antibonding electron. So when the number of bonding electrons is more, then the molecule is more stable. So suppose Na is the number of electrons in antibonding orbitals and Nb is the number of electrons in the bonding orbitals. If the bonding electron is more than that of antibonding electrons, so it is molecule is stable. Why? Because there is a net force of attraction is more. So in this case, net, net force of attraction is more. And if you take the reverse case, means when antibody electron is more so molecule is unstable means antibody reacts what it reacts it will react a net force of repulsion it will react a net force of repulsion so that's why the molecule becomes unstable when uh, both are equal to each other it is again unstable why it is unstable because it will influence the anti-bonding electrons slightly more than the bonding electrons in this case also it will influencing the anti-bonding electrons slightly more than the bonding electrons so net force of repulsion again it becomes higher now our next point is stability in terms of bond order so what is bond order so it is nothing but the half of the difference between the number of bonding electrons minus number of anti-bonding electrons so what does bond order provide the information let us see so when this whole uh, whole sum is positive so it will give you a stable molecular ion and when the bonding electron is more than that of anti bonding electron it becomes positive means molecule is stable or ion is stable but if it will give negative or zero zero is also, also possible and negative also possible 
then molecule on ion is unstable or species does not exist so this is the big information next point stability of the bond that is the molecular ion is uh, uh, it also gives the stability means how it will give a stability means bond order is proportional to bond dissociation energy is higher the bond order greater is the bond dissociation energy means if the bond order is 3 more stable bond order is 2 then less and bond order is 1 and a half is least stable like this is there Again, bond order is predicting. It is one means uh, uh, there is a single bond. If it is two, means double bond. If bond order is three, means triple bond. So these are the some indication their information providing. Chemical bond is always integral, but the uh, bond uh, bonding orbitals can be fractional also. So this uh, bond order can be fractional, but chemical bond is always integral. So there is a difference between bond order and uh, this one chemical bond. So I have just uh, given one uh, examples also, you can see it is less than 0, so it is highly unstable. 0 less than 0 is highly stable or does not exist. But if it is giving plus, plus means it can exist but unstable in case of fractional. Plus 1 is single bond, plus 2 is double bond, plus 3 is triple bond. Regarding the bond length, so bond length is inversely proportional to uh, bond order. So if the bond order is shorter, so bond length will be bigger. Okay, so if the bond order will be higher, bond length will be shorter we can understand through this example also you can see this bond order is increasing so definitely bond energy will be proportional proportion in this case it is proportional but in this case it will be inversely proportional you can see when it is increasing it is decreasing over here so you can see here this is the bond order 1 2 and 3 you can see the number of bonds also so we can compare and understand the logic now third point we can understand from the bond order is the magnetic nature if the electrons are paired, then it will give you the molecule is diamagnetic. And if it is unpaired electrons, it will give you paramagnetic. That's why oxygen is paramagnetic because it has two unpaired electrons. If you calculate from the uh, this one molecular orbital configurations, is greater number of unpaired electrons are present in molecular ion, so greater will be the magnetic paramagnetic nature. And this paramagnetic is uh, expressed in terms of magnetic moment also, which is equal to this is the formula n into n plus 2. So, under root of n into n plus 2 is square. So, this is the uh, unit is Bohr magneton. Bm is nothing but the Bohr, Bohr magneton. And what is n? n is the number of unpaired electrons. So, if the number of unpaired electron is 1, so you write so 1 into 2, 2 plus 1, 3, so you will get this value. If n equal to 2, so you will get this value. You can see here n equal to 3, this value, n4. Uh, 24 square root of 24 and 5 square root of 35 and equal to 6 means square root of 48 so, so from here we can compare how many unpaired electrons are present so there is one trick so you can see here one means uh, from this uh, value if one means number of unpaired electrons in the molecule is 1 2 means number of unpaired electrons will be 2 3 means from Bohr magnitude we can uh, underestimate we can estimate that how many unpaired electrons are present 3 means 3 unpaired electrons 4 means 4 unpaired electrons just ignore this value and this will decide the number of unpaired electrons in the molecule or a ion